तो सो आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट दी वॉट यू कॉल दीज आर सम ऑफ दी टॉपिक्स दैट आई एम ट्राइंग टू कवर इन दिस वन आवर वील टॉक समथिंग अबाउट कंटेमिनेशन the types and sources of contaminations in hydraulic filters now filtration is a vast subject filtration you can have filtration for engine you can have filtration for compressed air and filters you can have filtration for process applications this specifically is for the hydraulic applications so we are talking about contamination types and sources what are the standards that are used to uh you know measure the cleanliness of the hydraulic oil that is being used in the hydraulic system what are the types of filter media and what are the ratings how do you define the ratings of a hydraulic filter uh, element how do you select which type of media to be used for your application what is the life of the filter element okay and when a filter manufacturer comes to sell you something filter housing Uh, he decides you give him the specification he gives you uh, what filter is appropriate for you uh, we prefer that you know even the customer should be knowing how uh, that filter is uh, you know worked out by the filter manufacturer so we'll talk about how do you select a filter housing uh, from a, a given parameters and we'll also talk about what are the different types and locations of filters in a hydraulic filter hydraulic system and what analysis can be done for a hydraulic fluid so i'll start off by saying that you know more than 75% of all hydraulic and lubrication system failures you can attribute it to the uh, excessive contamination in the hydraulic oil most of the problems of uh, seals getting damaged your valves not functioning your pumps breaking down are the co uh, root cause is usually the uh, uh, contamination in the hydraulic oil now what does contamination cause what 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 happens to you when there is excessive contamination in the hydraulic fluid there is a loss of production okay you have to replace the uh, components like the pumps valves now this part you know you have to figure out that a hydraulic filter costs you anything between 1000 to let's say 40 50000 you know pressure line filters are expensive but mostly the return line filters it will cost you anything from 1000 to 15000 rupees uh, and it is a one time buy the only thing you are changing is the filter element which costs you anything between uh, 500 to 5000 or 6000 rupees at best 10000 rupees now if you do not do this the failure is of the components the pumps valves these are all product components which costs you in lakhs and more than the cost of the product component that you are replacing the problem is the time the machine gets shut down because of this failure another issue is the hydraulic oil replacement you know as uh, the contaminants uh, keep on gathering in the hydraulic oil you need to replace it after it uh, becomes completely degraded now that's a cost for uh, you replacing it with new oil the disposable of the hydraulic oil also because of environment issues is a costly affair you know you you need to pay some money to uh, dispose this uh, hydraulic oil overall your maintenance cost increases your scrap rate increases the functions of what does a hydraulic fluid do in a hydraulic system it is used as a energy transmission to move the move motion of your actuator like a hydraulic cylinder or a hydraulic motor the hydraulic fluid uh, depending on different uh, systems and designs how do you operate those cylinders Uh, how many seconds what loads are you carrying so it is used to transfer the energy uh, delivered by from the pump to the cylinder lubrication of internal moving parts keeping uh, heat transfer and the sealing clearances between moving parts what happens when there is a damage when there is contaminant damages 
okay as uh, your technology keeps uh, improving day by day okay so the kind of systems that are being designed you know uh, 15 20 years back you had simple directional valves simple gear pumps most of the applications were designed around that you know as uh, the uh, machines that are being produced the hydraulic systems that are being produced uh, the pumps uh, the hydraulic valves all the products that are used in a hydraulic system are getting uh, more sophisticated so what happens is uh, the clearances in these walls and these pumps are very, very fine. So if there is contaminant in your uh, hydraulic oil, there is a blockage of, uh, of your orifices, your components start wearing down, there is cause of rust or other oxidation, there is chemical compound formation, also the additives in the hydraulic oil, it starts getting depleted as the contaminant increases leading to you having to dispose the hydraulic oil. Also, there is, you known that there is a, a biological growth in this hydraulic oil also. So just for you to get a reference on what are the kind of clearances, uh, different uh, components in a hydraulic system would look like, you know, and where uh, the orifices get blocked, as I was saying earlier your anti-friction bearings clearance of 0.5, your vein pumps have clearances up to one micron, uh, servo walls one to four, piston pumps around five to 40. So these are the microns ratings of orifices that we are ta talking of uh, when we are talking about hydraulic oil and hydraulic systems. Now, just to give a reference of what do you mean by microns? Okay, so uh, what is the size of a micron-based particle? So a grain of ta table salt is 100 microns. Human hair is 70 microns, the tip of your human hair. And for a normal, I am bespectacled, so, but when somebody with a 20-20 eyesight, uh, the visibility is 40 microns. And we are now talking about hydraulic filtration where the micron ratings we are talking is 2 micron 5 microns 10 microns 20 microns so ideally your the particles that you want to filter are not visible to the uh, human eye so this is just a reference of uh, what the micron particles you are trying to filter now we can talk about the types and sources. Now, as I said earlier, each uh, filtration, the filtration for engines, filtration for compressed air process, every, every uh, source has a different problem. For hydraulic oil, we will talk about particulate contamination. There is That's the number one problem in hydraulic oil. Uh, number two is water. Now, water is available in free and dissolved water. I'll talk about uh, the difference between free and dissolved water later. And air is a uh, contamination that we can talk about. So how, how are these particulates formed uh, in a hydraulic system? Okay. So basically, when you're building up this uh, hydraulic power packs, uh, there is a lot of uh, there is a lot of piping, uh, the pumps, walls are all being assembled, the hydraulic tanks are being assembled. So first problem is here, there is a lot of ingress of contaminants during manufacture and assemblies of this power pack. Now, you install the power pack, your machine is up and running. Contaminants are still coming in. There is a hydraulic cylinder. Your seals have uh, broken. The uh, you know the hydraulic contaminants are coming through the piston rod into the cylinder and into the uh, hydraulic system. Now hydraulic systems, uh, you know, it it's a sort of a closed loss uh, system. Uh, and the third part is the new fluid. Now. In my experience, uh, whenever I talk to customers, they always assume that the fluid that they buy from an oil company is the cleanest possible because the oil companies are always talking about uh, super clean oil that they are selling. 
uh, i agree with them when they uh, sell this or when they manufacture this oil it is clean they are up to your nas 3 or iso nas 5 levels of whatever they promote but as soon as they put in a barrel and then they sell them and then it, the barrel sits either at their place for some months and then it comes to your place and it is sitting in your works for some months the contaminants start building up in the barrel itself so cond condensation also happens the uh, contaminants are getting formed inside the barrels the rusting is happening so uh, in, there are a lot of cases where people take the hydraulic oil and pour it directly into your hydraulic system, which I believe is very, very wrong. Ideally, you should pass it through, they use a hand pump and just uh, transfer it to the hydraulic uh, reservoir. Ideally, please don't do that. Please pass it through a filtration uh, system. There's something called an offline filter. You can pass it through this uh, couple of filters clean it and then pour it into the hydraulic reservoir. That's uh, what needs to be done. Internally generated during operation. Uh, so when the hydraulic system is uh, uh, working, uh, you're servicing, you're maintaining, then also uh, the contaminants are being added into the hydraulic system. So these contaminants, is uh, you cannot uh, foolproof it, you cannot stop it, it will keep on uh, coming inside, it will keep on dirtying your system. Uh, the cleanliness level of an oil just uh, deteriorates uh, if you are not doing anything. Uh, so, uh, you know, it needs to be cleaned all the time for your system to work efficiently. So, uh, this is just, uh, forget the numbers uh, on this slide. Uh, this is just to show you that uh, where could you, uh, you know, encounter maximum uh, contaminants? Uh, mobile equipments, which are outside in, in fields like tractors and excavators, uh, they have a lot of ingression of uh, hydraulic con contaminants. Uh, the steel plants or your uh, uh, factories where hydraulic equipments are being used, it's a little lesser than mobile equipments. And assembly and clean rooms where you have some certain special environments, uh, where you have controlled environment, as I can say, the ingress is a little lesser than uh, your steel plants kind of a thing. But if you look at it, uh, the ingress is still happening. It keeps on happening and it cannot be pre prevented. As I'm again reminding you, the uh, contaminants that we are talking of are particles which are not visible to the a naked human eye. So it keeps on happening, contaminants produce contaminants, it is getting ingressed, components are uh, producing more uh, contaminants. So this is an ongoing process. So some preventions, uh, if you're in a factory or you're working in a, uh, on a hydraulic system, some things that can be done to reduce the ingress of this contamination. Filter air uh, breather, you know, this is a very critical component. There are a lot of times when you, when you're filling up your hydraulic oil into your uh, tank, the worker just forgets to cl uh, close up the uh, tank and, uh, you know, the ingress keeps uh, happening. Correct system flushing. The general practice when uh, a system is, is delivered to a new hydraulic system is delivered to a plant or to uh, a company. The I first thing they try to do, the service guys who are installing this hydraulic system is to clean the uh, hydraulic system. They flush it out. There is a lot of usage of hydraulic filters during that time. They keep changing these elements till they think that uh, the uh, contaminants that are ingressed into the pipelines that are stuck up in the walls or pumps uh, on the lines in the cylinders are all removed and are all cleaned up. So correct system flushing when uh, a machine is delivered, that is the advice. Uh, actuator seals uh, need to be checked uh, and uh, replaced in a timely manner. Uh, I would also advise that uh, to use uh, good seals in your components uh, and not buy it on a cost basis uh, because this is one of the critical areas where the contaminants keep uh, coming in. 
so you want to use good actuator seals uh, again during servicing uh, the servicing guy needs to be very particular that he is uh, you know doing the servicing in such a manner that uh, more and more contaminants are not being pulled into the system he cleans up in, in a good place uh, he sees that he uh, closes up the systems uh, when he's finished his servicing and i have again earlier told you the new fluid filtration where we assume that this fluid is the cleanest it is not and you need to see that you filter it before you uh, put it into a hydraulic reservoir now i talked about water being a contamination there are two types of water in the hydraulic uh, system uh, one is the free water uh, uh, one i'll just go to the next slide uh, this is the saturation points of the different uh, fluids. Uh, after a point, the uh, hydraulic oil gets absorbed, gets dissolved into the uh, hydraulic oil, and it's not easy to re uh, remove uh, with you know the methods that are available. Uh, this is not required. Dissolved water uh, to be removed is only where very critical uh, applications are there. Generally, free water has to be removed. There are uh, filter manufacturers who will give you elements which can uh, adsorb the uh, water from uh, the uh, hydraulic oil. So you have a normal hydraulic filter. They have a different type of an element. You have to just replace the uh, contaminant removal uh, element with this uh, water removal element. You put it in and it adsorbs the free water and you're free of uh this so this is how the oil looks when it is filled up with the water okay so on the right side you have a relatively cleaner hydraulic oil and as it uh, gets uh, ingressed with a lot of water that's how the hydraulic oil starts looking what it does, it uh, water being in oil, uh, it uh, corrodes the metal surfaces. Uh, there is abrasive wear, there is bearing failures. Again, fluid additives uh, reduce uh, breakdown. The viscosity of the oil also, there is a variance when oil is uh, present in the hydraulic oil. Uh, water is present in the hydraulic oil. Also, there is an increase in electrical conductivity in the hydraulic oil. Uh, how to stop this? Uh, very similar to the contaminants, you have actuator seals, uh, uh, Good use good actuator seals, replace them uh, when they are, uh, you know, uh, broken or cracked. Reservoir opening leaks, wherever there are openings, please ensure that these are kept closed. Condensation, nothing much you can do. It happens depending upon the atmosphere. If like you're in Bombay, uh, there will be more conden condensation as compared to a place like uh, maybe Pune, I guess, uh, because of the atmosphere. Uh, heat exchanger, water-based heat exchangers, if there are leakages, they can go into the uh, hydraulic systems. Uh, types of uh, water contamination removal. Again, uh, the first two are where uh, used for the removal of the free water. You absorb or there are centrifuges where the hydraulic is uh, uh, moved in a centrifuge uh, and by uh, gravity, the water separates out from the hydraulic oil and you can drain it and remove it from the system. The third uh, methodology called the vacuum dehydration. Now, this is a special type of uh, filtration system. This is generally used to remove where your application needs to remove dissolved water. Ideally, applications in power plants, steel mills, uh, this vacuum dehydration systems are extensively used. Why they are used? Because uh, these places have very sophisticated hydraulic systems using proportional walls, servo walls, they are using piston pumps. So the oil quality has to be at the highest levels and even dissolved water needs to be removed now. or removing free water doesn't help they need to remove the dissolved water this uh, vacuum dehydration system actually heats the water in heats the oil hydraulic oil in vacuum 
and removes this uh, water uh, heating it vacuum heating oil in vacuum prevents the degradation of the hydraulic oil if you just heat the oil the, uh, the the oil will burn but when you do it in vacuum this doesn't happen and the hydraulic oil uh, water can be then separated from the hydraulic oil and removed some of the uh, cleanliness standards now how do you measure the cleanliness level of a hydraulic oil how do you uh, talk to each other on what is the cleanliness level of the hydraulic oil available with you or an oem specify uh, uh, to the his user on what cleanliness level of the hydraulic oil should be maintained so that his equipment runs smoothly you know there are different types of customers you have you go to steel plants very educated engineers but there are customers like people who use tractors people who are uh, running <laughs> people who are uh, running excavators or dumpers and all that so there are different types of uh, customers so the oem generally would love to mention that this is the cleanliness of level of the oil that has to be maintained so that his uh, products run smoothly so uh, the first system is the iso code so it is usually Uh, written in the way that is shown on this slide, eighteen uh, by sixteen by thirteen. The eighteen, the first part uh, of that code uh, represents particles which are greater than or equal to two microns. The second one are particles greater than or equal to five microns, and the third is uh, the uh, particles greater than or equal to fifteen microns. So this is the ISO code. This is. Uh, what is specified by hydraulic oil manufacturers or oems who are saying that this is the cleanliness level that they seek the customer uh, to be to use when they are using their uh, products uh, there is another methodology which is quite uh, famous that is the nas levels so this is a table which is correlating the iso code to the nas level so nas level 12 is uh, corresponding to the iso code of 23 by 21 by 18 again the number of particles you are talking about is 80000 20000 2500 2, upon the different uh, sizes ideally people like Na levels at nas say uh, very high sophistication they can go down to nas 5 and nas 4 uh, depending of the type of components that are being used in their hydraulic system just a reference for you uh, uh, for uh, what are the cleanliness level required if your hydraulic system have these different products as you see the servo control valves need hydraulic oil to be at the high cleanest level of 16 by 14 by 11 so uh, again uh, now you see the last one which is the new unused oil okay so Uh, when you are pouring into the hydraulic reservoir it is at 20 by 18 by 15 now if you have servo control or vane or piston pumps in your hydraulic circuit this oil definitely does not work for you okay and that means it will lead to problems this uh, uh, valves will get clogged much faster they will wear out much faster so uh, as i said earlier also the unused fluid should not be considered as the cleanest fluid oil that is being supplied to you so we'll talk about the uh, filter media ratings how do you define now these uh, terminologies are generally useful when you are buying or selling uh, hydraulic filters to your customers or buying from a filter manufacturer a uh, filter media rating is expressed as a beta ratio for a particular microphone it is defined as a beta ratio this is uh, connected to the efficiency of the hydraulic filter element what it can achieve so uh, this is the definition of a beta ratio it is the number of particles upstream you put a filter at any part of the hydraulic system the particles that are unfiltered before entering the filter what are the number of particles before it enters the filter 
divided by the number of particles downstream that is after it has passed through the filter now in this case there are 50000 particles upstream and 10000 particles uh, downstream uh, as it, it it gets filtered depending upon the efficiency of the filters out of 50000 uh, uh, 40,000 is uh, removed and 10,000 still goes into your hydraulic system. Then the beta ratio is 5. Now the beta ratio is defined as beta ratio and this is defined for a 10 micron filter element. So the beta ratio uh, where it allows 10,000 particles to get past it is 5. To correlate with efficiency, this is the formula where uh, uh, efficiency is equal to 1 minus 1 upon beta into 100. That means this filter element, which allowed 40, which stopped 40,000 particles out of 50, but allows 10,000, the efficiency is 80%. So the beta ratio is correlated to the efficiency of the uh, filter element. This is how it looks like the different beta ratios. Uh, most of the filter manufacturers will bombard you with information you need to understand what it means, uh, how it relates to your efficiencies. Uh, the efficiency is required uh, by at different parts of a hydraulic system is uh, different. So you have to choose carefully which you want. So, and uh, the filter manufacturers keep on improving this. Uh, uh, you know, uh, earlier, even a 95% would have been fine with the earlier technology, but nowadays uh, 100 beta ratio, they are going up to 200 beta ratio. So they are making the uh, efficiencies of this filter elements finer and finer. This is because of the components that are being used, the hydraulic valves and pumps that are being used uh, are getting better and better. Uh, there is a OEM who used to manufacture uh, their products with uh, gear pumps. They have completely uh, shifted to piston pumps. Though a piston pump is more expensive than gear pump, he wants to improve his uh, product so he keeps improving the technology of his product so the uh, hydraulic filter element efficiency have to keep pace with all that so that these other products function uh, efficiently uh, how do you select a filter okay so uh, I'll just show you this. There is uh, one more uh, element which used to be used earlier, the stainless steel wire mesh. Uh, that is a favorite element because uh, people can use that element, clean it and reuse it again. Uh, that part, I think, has gone long back. A lot of filter manufacturers nowadays uh, do not show stainless wire mesh stainless steel in their catalogs at all because, uh, you know, People think that cleaning a filter element is good, that they can keep on using it. Please understand this element costs you hardly 2,000 or 3,000 rupees. Now, if you have a 5 micron element and you use, a, uh, use pressure to dislodge the particles that are stuck in this wire mesh, the 5 micron element, uh, the pore has opened up and it uh, is now a 15 micron. The number of times you keep cleaning it, uh, the efficiency of the element just goes down drastically. You may as well remove the filter from this system. So uh, I strongly uh, advise you not to go for those kind of system. Uh, cellulose is another media that was being used a lot. This is a paper media. Again, efficiency is up to 92 to 95 percent. Nowadays, uh, if you open up any major filter comp, uh, customer filter manufacturers catalog, you will not even find cellulose, you will not find the SS wire mesh. Nowadays, uh, glass fiber is the media people are using because it allows efficiencies of above 99%. So they just keep on improving uh, that. Uh, they are uh, initially started with a single layer of fiberglass. Now you are talking about multi layer fiberglass. Uh, what it does is, as you keep increasing the area of filtration, the uh, capacity to hold the contaminants is getting more and more. So if you see for the multi-fiberglass, the capacity, the dirt holding capacity, what we call as dirt holding capacity, has increased. This means that uh, for the same filter, if you're using a multi-layered fiberglass, the life of this element can be more. You can use it for more. 
uh differential pressure uh, is another thing that i'll discuss i guess and i go as i go ahead uh there is something called as a clean when you're selecting of uh, hydraulic filter from a filter manufacturer or you're selling one or you're designing a hydraulic fi filter uh, the clean delta p the all major filter manufacturers will have this curves in their catalogs which you have to study before selecting a filter so you have to buy a filter at the cleanest differential pressure available so uh, when you are freshly installing a hydraulic filter into your system now for written line filters uh, the delta p should be uh, less than 0.5 bar and uh, for pressure line you can you know stretch it up till 1 bar but it should be below that please understand that cutoffs uh, the life of the element is from that 0.5 bar to whatever bypass wall or your uh, indicator setting is set up at 3.5 or 4 or 5 bar so if you select a filter which has a differential pressure of let us say 2 bar then you know the life of the element is very short so uh, the filter manufacturer can actually give you what happens is he chooses a uh, smaller sized filter and gives you a higher del differential pressure filter so that he can outgun his competitor who corrects who sizes it correctly so that's a danger you have to see that you have to ask the uh, person who's uh, quoting to you on what should what is the clean differential pressure he is offering when he is quoting a particular filter and these are all shown in the catalogs now we talk about how filter housing selection now this is how a hydraulic filter uh, looks like there's an inlet port outlet port you have a filter element uh, inside now there is an indicator here okay this uh, where i'm showing my pointer okay Uh, there are various types of indicators this one looks like a pop up indicator uh, when it shows uh, green then it is okay you can keep on when it shows red it tells you to change the uh, element it has got clogged and you have to change the element okay uh, now there are these are pop up visual indicators there are differential pressure gauges also which can be put up Uh, and there are electrical indicators now uh, somebody having one or two hydraulic equipments uh, you know this visual indicator people can watch it and you know can change the element at the uh, right time but if you are working in huge steel plants they would like it to be uh, have a, they like to have electrical indicators so that they can uh, pull it to their control room and from there they will check whether the element has got clogged or not so uh, what do you do when you go to select a housing filter filter housing so first you ask for system pressure uh, then you need to know the flow rate what are the options like the connections whether you need in what type of indicators you need whether you need a bypass wall uh, what is the element media what efficiency you require so all these are questions that needs to be Uh, uh these are the uh, specification that needs to be collected before you are selecting a appropriate hydraulic filter now uh, i wanted to explain about what is the bypass uh, wall uh generally uh, what happens is uh, you know there is if you are working in a hydraulic system and uh, the hydraulic uh, the elements you put a fresh hydraulic filter but after 2 3 months as the contaminants are being caught by the element the differential pressure across the uh, hydraulic filter starts increasing so usually the hydraulic element inside the filter assembly uh, they are designed to have a what we call as a collapse rating of up to 10 bar or some uh, manufacturers have it, uh, have it up till 20 bar that means if you fail to notice the indicator or you ignore the indicator rating and uh, the high contaminants inside the elements keeps on increasing the element at its collapse rating will burst and the whole 
element media and all the contaminants that it has caught over a period of time will go, go all go into your hydraulic system and damage the hydraulic system completely so depending and this is how a hydraulic uh, circuit designer uh, depending on the criticality will decide whether he wants to have a bypass wall fitted into the filter what it does is as it hits a particular pressure differential pressure let's say 5 bar the wall opens but this is not a good thing mostly what it does it it allows the dirty oil to go back into the system it the filtration part has stopped but the element is not collapsing but the filtration has stopped the hydraulic oil bypasses the filter and goes back into the system which is not very good but and there are manufacturer especially on the pressure line side they where you are protecting proportional or servo walls they don't want that they like to use electrical indicators there there is no bypass wall option they cannot allow contaminated oil to bypass the filter and damage the more expensive pumps or walls in the system so there it is mandated that you have to change the element at the right time please also understand that if the element life is let's say 30 grams of holding the dirt the bypass wall or the indicator setting is such that you know the elements are generally being uh, transferred within when they touch uh, 15 grams or 20 grams you never want to use the element till the end of its life and this is to not only uh when you are talking in hydraulic filters when you talk in engine you want to change the element before it reaches its collapse rating much before it reaches its collapse rating you don't want to go right to the edge you want to uh, you know change this elements when is good enough time so as i explained earlier these are typical flow pressure curves that are used by hydraulic filter manufacturers for a particular flow so you select a, a filter assembly the working pressure is always mentioned of what that hydraulic filter can take and then depending on the float you plot a curve uh, let us say you have uh, you this flow rate of 30 lpn okay so the differential pressure here is around 0.5 bar that's how you select if if not if if your uh, differential pressure is high that means you need to go to the next size of the hydraulic filter you cannot be selecting undersizing the filter you have to see that your uh, differential pressure of the housing and element combined should be uh, lesser than 0.5 bar for uh, low pressure filters and for high it should be lesser than a bar now we'll talk about the types and uh, locations of the filters where do you have hydraulic filters where do you fit hydraulic filters in a hydraulic system so there are four types uh, one is the suction line filter then you have the pressure line filters you have return line filters and you have off line filters so this is how a suction filter looks like the, this is usually fitted between the uh, pump and the hydraulic reservoir Uh, this used to be quite popular earlier but now uh, people prefer not uh, using the suction filter uh, because the pump has to do extra work to pull the uh, oil from the reservoir uh, through this suction filter so they prefer not putting it there are strainers that are put nowadays so uh, these are the advantages what we can say it is a last chance protect i obviously pump is one of the most expensive products in a hydraulic system so it's a last chance protection for the pump uh, it's easier to you know service than a some strainer but as i said uh, you cannot use finer filtration here these are core filter 100 microns 150 micron 50 micron kind of uh, elements that can be that have to be used Uh, the cost is uh, relatively high and uh, this can only be used to protect the pump and it's no use for the rest of the hydraulic circuit and uh, generally uh, used when there are gear pumps but when you're using piston and beam pumps uh, they don't like to use this strainer 
there is uh, there is no suction filter in most of the hydraulic uh, circuits that are being designed nowadays uh, the second one is the uh, pressure line filter uh, this is uh, put up in a place after the pump but before the hydraulic valves uh, to protect this uh, expensive uh, valves especially when you have proportional servo valves in the circuit the pressure line filter is being used uh, advantages, uh, it is highly, uh, again, very fine uh, uh, filters, uh, higher efficiency element filters are being used. So it protects the comp uh, component that it uh, protects. Again, uh, it contributes to the overall uh, system cleanliness. I believe uh, here you use filters of one, two, three microns, uh, five microns, very fine filtration is being done here. So this contributes uh, to the overall cleanliness of the hydraulic oil. Uh, very high, as I said, high efficiency, fine filtration elements being used. Uh, any debris from the pump is uh, captured by the filter here. Uh, one difference of this filter compared to the other filters in the hydraulic system, this is a pressure line filter. So the pressure is usually defined by uh, the uh, hydraulic pump. So, and we have pressure line filters, manufacturers have up till 400 bar. So it could be anything uh, from 20 bar to 100, 200, 300, 400 bar uh, filters. So because of this, these filters are the most expensive filters. Two, A, uh, handling very high pressures, B, very fine filters, uh, filtration being done by these filters. Again, uh, uh, this filter does not uh, is not useful uh, for the downstream. That means after the actuators are returned, the oil is returning back to the reservoir. Uh, this filter does not come in contact with that oil at all. Uh, third one is the return line filters, and I believe uh, hundred percent of hydraulic filters uh, pressure line is used only when there are critical components. Uh, so. But you find a return line filter in almost all the hydraulic uh, uh, systems that are uh, defined. This is uh, after the actuator as uh, after the oil returns back to the uh, hydraulic reservoir. Usually defined, uh, designed at twice the flow rate of the hydraulic pump. Uh, one thing to note is the pressures are lower than 10 bar as the oil is returning back uh, from the actuator to the hydraulic oil. So these are always low pressure filters. Uh, nowadays, earlier we used to have inline filters, but nowadays uh, because of space constraints, you design filters in such a way that you can mount it inside the hydraulic. So they are called tank top filters. So they're mounted into the hydraulic reservoir. So uh, this will catch uh, where debris is returning. And I believe this is where the maximum debris comes in from externally from, uh, this is where the uh, debris is co coming from, the cylinders or hydraulic motors that uh, on its return back to the hydraulic dam. So this is used to stop that. Uh, costs are lower than the pressure line filters because these are low pressure filters. As I said, can be made in line or in tank. Uh, again, it does not protect the specific component of the hydraulic walls. Uh, no cut protection from pump generated contamination. And sometimes there are surges which may affect the filter performance on the return line. Uh, this is one of the most important, I believe. Uh, so the earlier ones of our filters there are that are mounted in the hydraulic circuit that are mounted on the hydraulic system of your equipment. This is offline filters. This is not connected. This is an external system. As I said, uh, uh, the uh, manufacturer or uh, the user likes to maintain his hydraulic oil at a certain NAS level or at an ISO level, depending on the components that are being used in, in its his hydraulic circuit. So this is uh, usually in the form of a filter card. We are you have a couple of filters you have a, the you have a pump motor assembly uh, you have a hose uh, band so your hoses 
you put uh, these uh, uh, there are two hoses so you put them into the reservoir the from one side uh, the pump motor will pull the hydraulic oil from the reservoir uh, run it through the two filters and then it put it back into the uh, hydraulic reservoir again so the filters usually uh, one of the filters could be 20 microns the other one can be 5 microns so you can will you will remove this. So let us say your hydraulic oil is at NAS level 12 and you have to clean it at NAS 6 level. So you just put this uh, offline filter and it will keep uh, cleaning the hydraulic oil till it reaches the uh, required uh, quality that you require. Again, uh, the same system should be used when you are transferring uh, new oil from the barrels to the hydraulic reservoir. So again, advantages, uh, the, the servicing of this equipment can be done without uh, stopping your actual uh, equipment. It's an external equipment. Uh, uh, flow rates can be fixed. So again, uh, depending upon the size of your hydraulic oil, uh, your oil can be cleaned in one hour. It can be cleaned in two days. So it depends upon what is the size you uh, of the filter cut that can be done. Also, the same uh, offline filter can be used for, so let's say you have 10 equipments, so you have 50 equipments. The same offline filter can be used to uh, uh, clean up all the hydraulic reservoirs in a particular uh, uh, environment, factory or environment. So the hydraulic oil keeps on cleaning. It increases the life of the oil. It uh, helps. Uh, to maintain a higher cleanliness level in the hydraulic system. The hydraulic filters that are being used in the hydraulic system, their lives improve, the uh, pumps, walls, every, uh, and the other components that are being there also, uh, the life of the component increase if you uh, keep a good uh, offline filter with you. So again, uh, some disadvantages, okay, it will cost you a little bit. It's not, uh, it's a pump motor and a filter assembly and a uh, trolley that has there. So the initial buying cost is high. Once you buy it, then you're just changing the elements that are in the filter assemblies. Some of the methodologies, how do you measure the clients? As I uh, told you earlier, you know, you can't see the, uh, contaminant uh, levels, uh, uh, the micron ratings, you can't see it. So how do you measure? The first patch test uh, is something that was used to be done uh, earlier, never used to give you accurate ratings. Uh, the portable particle counters are the ones that are now being uh, used all over the place. You have a contamination monitor, uh, which uh, you take some uh, QRCs into your system, pull oil out from different uh, parts of your circuit pass it through this uh, particle counter and you can get uh, the readings in ISO standards, you can get the readings in NAS standards and uh, there is uh, especially the defense uh, of the, they use uh, Russian equipment, the Russians use the uh, DEFTON standards, so uh, all these standards can be uh, available with this particle counter. You have to keep this. Uh, th this also helps you if you have some uh, breakdown in your hydraulic system to identify where the problem is. Uh, you can do this uh, with the particle counter. Obviously, there are lab analysis uh, for this, but uh, I believe uh, the particle counter is the more preferred and more accurate of the uh, all the equipments where you can measure the particle size, particle counts of uh, uh, your um, hydraulic oil in the hydraulic oil. Say, let's say if in your circuit you have a 10 micron element, but uh, your uh, because of your environment or and your system, uh, you are generating a lot of five micron particles. So it will help you to decide that okay, maybe we should put a 5 micron element instead of a 10 micron element. So these things can be done if you have these particle counters uh, with you. Earlier, uh, you used to have uh, take oil in a speaker, take it to a lab and then measure in the particle counters. But nowadays they suggest that online 
uh, when the machine is working to pull the oil there only. So nowadays you have particle counters which you can mount on the machine, pull the oil and send it through the system. Uh, results are available within two to four minutes uh, depending on the manufacturer. And uh, you know whether your oil is clean or not. Again, in the offline uh, filters that I was mentioning where you are cleaning the oil earlier, uh, you used to measure the quality of, uh, take the oil in a beaker, send it to a lab and uh, find out that, okay, this is at NAS level 12. Then you keep cleaning, cleaning. Then at a particular time, you again send it. Uh, so now uh, that part has stopped. Nowadays, they have uh, similar particle counters mounted on the filter cards. Uh, where it's uh, it works as an indicator. So you know you have started with 12, you have hit NAS level 6, uh, and uh, which is good enough for you. Uh, you know, so th those things are also available in the market nowadays. So that's it from me. Hello. Sir, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. So any uh, question from the participants? Dr. Rantunga, then Mr. Kiran Patel. Any any question from anyone? Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Damika Ranatunga from Sri Lanka. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Sir. yeah, it is a very great uh, pleasure that uh, it is a very nice uh, session and it is knowledge very knowledgeable and the very important for the as an industry as, as, uh, young engineers. And uh, I hope uh, we learn a lot of things and we gain a lot of things and that's good practices. And what are the best practices in industry? That, that kind of things that uh, it is a very important, very useful uh, lecture and uh, uh, we we enjoyed a lot and uh, myself and actually I have experienced guy that uh, I I learned uh, some important things from uh, Mr. Uh, Danan. Then uh, thank you, Mr. Danan, uh, as a resource person. Uh, it is very great um, and uh, uh, very good session. And I participate this is the first time I joined with uh, this, this session and. So I hope uh, the next time also definitely I'll join that uh, very knowledgeable things and knowledgeable things that we got in that. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, actually, I, I, I have one question. Like, yeah. uh, these hydraulic hoses and steel tubes are also pa part of hydraulic system. Correct. And uh, uh, cleanliness is also very important factor for uh, hoses as well as steel tube. Correct. So how we can measure the uh, cleanliness of uh, hydraulic hoses uh, depending on the mesh level, like uh, customers, particularly OEM, they are asking for mesh level 6 or mesh level 7. So uh, how you can achieve uh, this uh, cleanliness level? And uh, second thing is how you can uh, like uh, uh, improve or uh, this protect these hose assemblies from the, uh, uh, how you can improve the cleanliness of these hydraulic hose assemblies? So uh, I'll answer by giving an example. In my experience uh, where I was working, we had a customer uh, who had this condition that we have to give a certificate uh, mentioning the cleanliness of the hose. So when a hose is manufactured, obviously there are contaminants inside the hose. So what they used to make us is pass hydraulic oil of uh, through the hose and what comes out from the other side, we used to, used to measure it with a particle counter. And they defined a NAS level saying that you keep cleaning it till you till the oil that comes out gives you a NAS level, let's say six. Okay, till it hits six, you have to keep cleaning that hydraulic oil. And once you hit that NAS level six, then you certify and then you supply this to uh, our plant. So two things, uh, as I said, with offline, you can keep 
the oil clean you have this kind of particle counters most of the filter manufacturers have these particle counters which can measure the cleanliness as per iso and nas standards uh, the cleanliness of the oil Particle size is also important factor. Particle size and the yeah. weight of the um, contamination. These are the two factors which are very important. Correct, correct. So particle size can be anything depending on your hydraulic system and your environment. It can be anything. It could be 5 microns, 10 microns. So this contamination monitor actually will tell you that what kind of particles you are generating. Is it 10 microns? So what, where should you concentrate on? If you're producing 10 micron particles and you're using a 5 micron element, this element will stop but will clog very faster. And a 5 micron element is always more expensive than a 10 micron element. So uh, you can do that adjustment and catch the particles, improve your filtration life, improve the other components also. <laughs> Which kind of companies are manufacturing these elements, filter elements? These hydraulic filter manufacturers, you have a lot of them. You have Paul, you have Parker, Hydec, you have Filtrac, you have Argo Hytos, MP Filtry. So there are quite a number of uh, good manufacturers uh, uh, who produce in India itself, frankly. So there are some other local manufacturers like Hydroline, EP, Bhagwati also. So hydraulic filter, but uh, preferably in this market, these brands, uh, Parker, Paul, Filtrac, Hydec, these brands uh, quite work quite well. So any, any question from uh, any other participants? So thank you very much, sir. Uh, it was thank very you. useful session. Uh, uh, I think uh, it, it will be useful for all the participants. And what we are going to do, uh, we will be having recording of this session okay. and uh, we will be putting this recording on our YouTube channel also. So it will be shared to all the uh, people who are interested in, in hydraulics or who have more interest in filtration. So we will share this uh, YouTube uh, link also. So again, uh, thank you very much, sir, for sparing your valuable time and giving this uh, lecture. And uh, uh, again, in the next month, we will be having uh, this knowledge, uh, knowledge sharing, uh, sharing program, maybe in third week of October. So uh, we will share the details of that program shortly. So thank you very much, sir, uh, Dayan and sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.